Coming up, we'll kick off the historic 100th season of BU Men's Ice Hockey, meet the new head coach of women's basketball, Melissa Graves, and sit down with athletic director Drew Maricello as he goes one-on-one with senior soccer player Margaret Barry. It's time to let the dogs out on the season premiere of BU Terriers Unleashed. <laughs> Back and forth with it, lined up, shot, deflected, score! And Boston University is your Division I champion! This past summer, members of the Boston University men's hockey team, past and present, got together to play a little golf and kick off the team's 100th season. It was a great chance to reconnect, as well as reflect on the program's incredible history. Well, just the tradition and, and more the people that have been involved from, from the beginning of time, from Coach Kelly to Coach Parker and obviously Coach Quinn, and now I'm running the team now, so it's, uh, it's exciting to see all the faces, especially back today, and hopefully this kicks off a pretty good bunch of events we have through this year. This gathering of BU hockey talent represents five national championships, 38 regular season conference and tournament titles, 30 Beanpot trophies, multiple Hobie Baker winners, and dozens of NHL careers. An incredible showing for one of the most successful hockey programs in NCAA history. It's something that changes all our lives. Jack Parker meant so much to me and everybody else that he touched for the 40 years he coached here. Jack Kelly, all the way back, and uh, it makes it such a special place. But a national championship for Boston University, it's done. I think the common denominator through it all has been Coach Parker. He's been so uh, incredible at staying connected with his former players, and, and I think those of us that had the, the privilege to play for him, we appreciate him more the, the longer we're out. It's just something pretty special. It's hard to really define. Uh, it's just really good to get out here and see all the coaches and former players, especially my dad being a former player. It, mean, it means a lot to me just to be part of the program, so it's been a lot of fun today. Ready the camera? <laughs> you know, when I went to BU, you wanted to play college hockey. The kids that come to BU today, they want to play in the National Hockey League. So it's a little different mindset. He's got time and space. Pinned off a left side score! Player of the year, Jay Pandolfo. I just think they see the players that have been there before them and they realize how much success they have, whether it's in hockey or, or in life. You know, they have such a long and, and great tradition, I think. You know, young, young players coming up see that and they want to be part of it. I was very thankful to be surrounded by great teammates and great coaches. I remember being part of such a great class, uh, you know, just because I had a letter in my jersey, I think it didn't change the way we acted and we kind of led together and um, that's something I'll always remember. I think there's an NHL culture about BU, you know, just a high talent level that comes through the program. It um, seems like it uh, continues to do that year after year. Clayton Keller, great pass, they score! Boston University is moving on! Charlie McAvoy with the game winner! The team, the program is really run, you know, in a professional way. So, I mean, you're able to just learn and really thrive in an environment that, you know, allows you to have success and, you know, in our sport to, to get ready for the next level. When the 2021 NHL season began, there were 18 former Terriers on NHL rosters, as well as two head coaches and nine players in the AHL. Overall, Boston University has produced an astonishing 90 NHL players, an amazing accomplishment for the men's hockey program, but also a great reflection on the school. We've got a great university. Uh, academically, it's very strong. We've got awesome facilities. Uh, we've got great support through our administration. So we're kind of built for success, and it's our job to make sure that we have it. First of all, it's a great school, right? It gives you a lot of diversity, a lot of options. And um, there's a great brotherhood with the BU hockey program. You're meeting guys from classes, you know, all over, and the guys that came before you, you all share a lot of the same experiences just in different years. When I look back on my teammates and the experiences I had here, I, I, I just think the people that, that they, they tend to gravitate to, that they recruit to play for the hockey program are, are as good as it gets. I think that's what really sets it apart from other programs, and 
we had some pretty special moments on the ice as well, but I think I'll always remember the off-ice moments the most. I think we have a lot of former players who want to give back and, you know, want to see the next generation succeed. I had an awesome four years at BU and, you know, trying to give it back to the next group. Well, I just think it means so much to the university and, you know, the players, it means so much to them. I think uh, if you talk to any of these players here today, this was probably the four best years of their lives and maybe sometimes one or two best years of their lives, depending on their NHL careers. This is why you come to BU. You come to BU to play in the Frozen Four. You come to BU to play in situations like this. People know Boston University hockey because they know the story. They know the type of players that have played there. They see, you know, when you see a McAvoy and a Coyle and a Grizzly playing for the Bruins that went to BU, kids who grew up in the Boston area say, yeah, that's where I want to go to school. It was always instilled in us when we were there uh, that, that, you know, you're playing for something bigger than yourself. And, uh, you know, there, there are players that have come before you that, that represented excellence. And, and it was your responsibility to carry on a certain tradition. And now we're part of that tradition in a different way. And uh, we all love coming back. We all love, uh, uh, you know, seeing one another. And a lot of it has to do with the experiences we had when we were there. Once you put on the jersey, you know, if you're the first line center or if you're the guy in, you know, that's in and out of the lineup, everyone's a terrier. Everyone kind of pulls for each other, you know, whether it be on the team, after you play there, uh, and in life. Uh, so it's, it's a really good bond and everyone tries to take care of each other. Celebrating 100 years, that just shows, you know, the history and, you know, the deep, deep impact that the previous players have had on this program and, you know, the success we've had over the years. So it's, it's cool to see all the alumni out here, the, the guys who have built the program. It's going to be a good year to be a Terrier. We're excited to get going. Up next, we'll meet the new head coach of women's basketball, Melissa Graves, whose basketball philosophy is all about making young women successful on and off the court. When BU Terriers Unleashed continues. our basketball program are great ambassadors for the sport of basketball but great ambassadors for our university and I say this and I mean it they have rebuilt the culture of BU women's basketball. I'm thrilled to introduce Boston University's ninth head women's basketball coach. I just want to start out by saying I'm so honored and humbled to be able to have the opportunity to coach at a world-class institution like Boston University. I'm absolutely thrilled to be part of the Terrier family. Thank you all for providing this incredible opportunity and for your trust and belief in me to be able to represent this university and this program. I can't wait to meet the rest of Terrier Nation and this community of Boston. So thank you so much. Go be you. Without question, the BU Terriers have landed a rising star in new women's basketball coach, Melissa Graves. She played four seasons as a center at Notre Dame, then had a five-year international pro career before coaching at Colgate, Yale, and Wake Forest. I just felt ready at this point. You know, this is my eighth, ninth year coaching now. The job opened up. I was really excited about getting back to the Northeast where I'm from, really close to my family. You know, I played at Notre Dame, I've always been high academic, um, so that was really important to me to have that piece where you could recruit high level athletes who want the education. Coach Mo, who was here before me, did a really good job with them building a foundation and inherit something that was, you know, already pretty successful. Went to the championship last year. Obviously there were things we put in that were new offensively, defensively, but the culture wasn't broken, which was really, really important. After a successful playing career in college and as a professional, followed by eight years as an assistant coach at Strong Collegiate Programs, Melissa knows what it takes to be a winner in college basketball. Now she has a plan to take BU women's hoops to the next level. I feel like I'm a player's coach. I played recently, I played at a high level, I coached in this league, um, so I think there are just a lot of things that I could relate to. I think just being a player's coach and the relatability piece off the floor has, you know, has always been big for me. Here we go. 
Well, for me personally, it's great having a, a head coach who played my position and is really, you know, another tall girl um, and went through the system and even went on overseas. So having her um, lead the helm is really awesome to see. The competition level in practice this year has like elevated like to levels like I have never seen. And I absolutely love it. It's really gritty, it's really tough, but at the end of the day, we know it's making us better. The coaches coming in, they've just brought in a lot of excited energy, and I think everyone's just really excited for the season to get going. Good job, ladies. Off the court, Coach Graves is passionate about service and helping others. She's the founder and president of Play Bold, a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing sports and education opportunities in some of the most disadvantaged areas of the world. So Play Bold um, started about four and a half years ago. It was me and a few other coaches in the business started it. We do one trip a year. Um, and now it's grown from just going over doing clinics, bringing shoes and those sorts of things and doing classroom education to now we build basketball courts. So we just finished our second court. Um, the first one was in East Watini. The second one we just did a few weeks ago actually was in Uganda. So for them to be able to have a court now to um, like exercise and just get out a little bit has been really nice for them. I think it's really important for athletes especially to give back and be present in a way. So for you to come from a position here where we're already blessed in the United States for to have what we have, but then being a Division One athlete with the things that we're afforded, it's just a humbling experience and I think it's it's life altering. The BU women had a great season last year, but lost the Patriot League championship to Lehigh. It still hurts, but now Coach Graves and her team are using it as extra motivation for the 2021-22 campaign. That's a goal for all of our kids right now. They're really hungry. They're upset about the, the championship last year. They really wanted to win it. So they have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, which is nice. So hopefully they just take that into each game and use that as motivation. We've proven to ourselves that we can, like we're capable of winning. We're capable of going to Patriot League tournament. If we were this close last year, I think it's just up to us to continue to work hard to actually follow through with um, that goal of winning that Patriot League title. Getting that close and losing has really put a hunger in each and every one of us. I think this year, everyone is on the same page and having a goal of winning the championship and going all the way because it's about time. I think we're gonna be aggressive and we're gonna try and beat people down to their souls and make them wanna quit as early as we can. And I think that fans should be really excited to come see us this year because I know I'm excited to play, so it should be good. I think it's nice just to show that they've gained some respect in the conference. So we want to keep that um, kind of humility a little bit, but go into it confidently and just understand we have the respect all, fear none mentality. Um, every game matters because we want to host. That's our goal is to host the Patriot League and just know we need to respect all, fear none on every opponent that we play. Up next on BU Terriers Unleashed, we'll sit down with athletic director Drew Marichello and soccer standout Margaret Barry to find out what it means to be part of the Boston University Athletics Department. Don't go anywhere. As the fall sports season at Boston University comes to a close, senior soccer player Margaret Barry had an opportunity to sit down with athletic director Drew Marichello to discuss what it means to be a Division I athlete at Boston University. Pleased to be here with Margaret Barry, a senior member of our women's soccer team. Margaret, you've seen the gamut while well, you've been here for your four-year experience. You've won a Patriot League title as a freshman. everybody your impressions, your takeaways of your four years of uh, playing women's soccer at BU. Freshman year obviously was a crazy experience. It was so awesome being able to win the Patriot League title here on Nickerson and that's just really, really special. I had one of the hockey players say to me that he knew his teammates better the second week of this season than he did all of last year. Tell us about that dynamic. I just think that 
The beginning of the foundation of the team is like the most important before classes start. That's huge and crucial to our performance throughout the year because when we have no distractions about classes, obviously this is an academically rigorous school, which is why a lot of us athletes have chose it. When we don't have the distraction of school, we're able to kind of focus on relationships. What about you? How do you feel like your relationships have been able to grow this year? They're a lot more in person, I can tell you that. It was a completely different experience for all of us last year. Never mind the fact we weren't playing. We didn't know who we were gonna play. We didn't know when we were gonna play. We were implementing and living with all these protocols. Uh, so it was, a, it was a real challenge. This year the challenge has continued. I think we're still uh, living through this right now. And at the same time, there's much more human interaction. And when you think about why you got into this business, you got into this business to really be around people. Hard to believe that your career at BU is nearing a close. What's going to be your biggest takeaway when you look back? The relationships that I've built here are some of the most special relationships with staff members, with my teammates, um, with other coaches, just like everyone in this community is so welcoming and um, I truly feel like I have built really strong relationships with a large portion of the people that are here. How special is it for you to be the athletic director here and what sort of things kind of make this a really special place to work? been here a while now so I think I've got an informed observation of uh, what this place is all about. It sounds cliche but the, the people here from President Brown on down are just unbelievable. Above all I, I'm really still enthralled with our student athletes. I just uh, have always been uh, invigorated by their spirit, by their enthusiasm, by the way they can compete at the highest level athletically and are some of the smartest people in the world. I just enjoy being around our student athletes and the fact that I have um, good relationships that don't just, aren't just contained by the four or five years that they're here, but are lifelong. You alluded to lifelong friendships and, and I feel that I have these connections with our, with our student athletes that extend far after they graduate and their families and they become uh, an extended part of your family and that's certainly one of the virtues of working at BU. Who are some of the faculty members, the staff, folks at Sargent who've been really instrumental in making your college career a success? I would say for sure Nancy Feldman that I can't, I can't thank her enough for the last four years um, and Kelly Lawrence and Tori Christ. They're both amazing. Academically, the professors here are amazing, top tier. So just everything that they've taught me along the way. Also my teammates. I wish I could name everyone individually, but collectively everyone's been amazing. One, two, three, yeah! Up next, we'll reflect on last year's very unique athletic calendar and look forward to what's shaping up to be a very successful season for BU Athletics. Stick around as BU Terriers Unleashed continues. Following a challenging year both as a student and a Division I athlete at Boston University, it was great to finally have a somewhat normal start to the 2021-22 sports season. Now it's time to reflect on that recent past and look forward to what should be an exciting year for BU Athletics. Seeing everyone standing on the dock before practice, it's just a better energy around the program. It's been so fun. This year, I think there's that newfound sense of hunger for racing, taking every single opportunity we can to do the best we can in practice, in the weight room, in school. We've been training really hard and I think that we're at that point now where we're a little beyond just happy to be here. Um, they're putting in so much work that they want some real success out of it both individually and as a team. It's just great to have the energy back. We saw that from our first home soccer game. It was our biggest crowd uh, in years, not just the tailgate, but the next game after that was just a, a lively crowd. So far, we've had two home competitions. The stands have been packed. Everything we could hope for in terms of fans and the atmosphere, the excitement, whether it's parents, spectators, 
alumni or people at the school, so we're super happy. Our parents here at school, like they're awesome about coming to games. I'm excited to have my parents back in the stands and hopefully with the BU band in there, they're the best. So it'll be awesome getting them back in the gym and just having some noise. When we didn't have fans, I didn't realize how much I missed them. The noise and the momentum and just that energy that they give you. A big part of being a collegiate athlete is being able to represent your university at that division one level. Coming in every day, being able to represent BU, wearing the shirts, wearing the caps, it's just, it's, it's a motivator in and of itself. It's gonna be an exciting season. We've got some good momentum. It's been building. We really have the opportunity to just dig deep and get fit and get tough and get ready to go out and put that on display. It's once in a lifetime. And to be able to share that bond with their teammates, uh, I want them to remember that for the rest of their lives seeing how much I've developed as a person, as a leader, as an athlete. Um, I feel like I'm a much stronger person by being a part of this department, and I'm really thankful for the opportunities that I've had here. The vibe here, I think it's pretty energetic and active. I feel like the people at Inbu is, all of them are so friendly and nice. I think when you look back at last year, you realize how much we absolutely miss that that daily interaction. We're just really thrilled to have, have everybody back this year and in, in, uh, in, in the spirit uh, that they've extended has just been awesome. That'll do it for this episode. We'll be covering Boston University athletics all year long. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time for another exciting episode of BU Terriers Unleashed. Yeah, yeah,